Yes, indeed, Kelly. That was the mighty Tyrone knocking out the gods. And another one of our YouTube eight great falls to the guys that have worked their way through the 300. Coming up next, we have Top Notch versus Nick at night. And before we do that, of course, let's look at the way the bracket is. We know that Clyde, Chief Pat, Yao Yao, and Afern have all made their way through. We now that know that um, it will be Godson who is out and mighty Tyrone going up against Colton W83. And as I said, coming up now, it's Nick at Night versus Top Notch. But before we go into that, yeah, round of applause, guys. But before we get into that, one of the big questions everybody asks is, how did you get involved? So let's have a look at what Nick has to say. I actually went to college for audio engineering as my main degree. And while I was doing that, I was a huge gamer. So I was uploading a bunch of console stuff to YouTube. And it was just mostly for fun and my own enjoyment. But once I got back home and finished school, I started playing Supercell games quite a bit, specifically Boom Beach. Started uploading that just over, it's about three and a half years ago now. And I've expanded from Boom Beach onto Clash of Clans and now Clash Royale. And now I have a pretty dedicated mobile gaming channel. No retreat, no surrender, no distractions. The only perfect 10 our next player is concerned with is Elixir level. Maximum respect for Top Notch. Some people look at Tube Sensation, games at night and day. And now's the time for all that practice to be put to the ultimate test. Light things up for... Nick at night versus Top Notch. Initial thoughts. Ooh, this is going to be one of those games right there that, you know, Nick and Knight's definitely got something up his sleeves here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nick was known early in the early days of Clash Royale for using, like, rocket lightning, a lot of direct damage on towers. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you have a lot of unknown faces. All we know is these guys have been weeded out through, what, five, six hundred players? So we know that they're solid, but we don't know exactly what strategy brought them here. Well, you said that Nick and Knight plays a, a, a bit unique deck. What kind of deck can we see from him coming up now? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised, like you said, seeing some type of rock or some very highly committed pushes. Mm -hmm. All right, well, hopefully we'll be able to get into that, guys. Coming up very soon, we have the first game of the seventh set, I believe. Mm -hmm. Come on, Nick. All right, let's see how they start this one off right yep. off the bat. It's gonna be unknown to see what Top Notch is bringing here. He looks pretty confident over there, though. Both unit, both players again starting out. Oh, Siege Deck once again, another Expo. Expo going down here. I like the bowler, though. I like this bowler. That's that bowler's gonna, gonna be going in and beefing up all the yep. damage. Now Nick's gonna lose his Mega Minion to the opposing Mega Minion, but the bowler is gonna soak up a lot of damage from the Expo. Nick at Night did a very good job on defending on his end right there. And the Mega Minion doesn't get a shot either, so Nick at Night's tower's untouched. Wow. That was a solid defense. Yeah, absolutely. Very Bowler's solid defense. Bowler's a great counter. You got to get a unit down that can soak up that damage from the expo like that. And here we are with a All furnace. Right. All right, one of my favorite cards. Got the furnace going down. So we're going to see right there. So you see, see chip damage and check out the expo. The expo is going to be going to be playing as a defense. There. Yeah. It's going to go to work on the furnace, though. And that's key. Nick not so happy about that, def that expo's placement. He's and gonna be that, going ahead and holding it down just with yep. the uh, explosive defense right there. It, that's not even that bad. No, I mean, it's not something you see that often, but it's an expensive defensive structure. Six elixir. It's very hard for that to be a positive. Be on defense. Yep. Let's see, we have a miner coming in here, but as you do know, a lightning though. I like it, lightning, but that didn't touch the expo. The expo continuing to defend. Now, of course, it can't touch the mega minion, but. Mega Minion's not going to get to the tower. Got very close, though. Uh-oh, Top, Top Notch, Notch giving him the good luck. <laughs> yeah. Showing some good intimidation arrows. towards him. And there's another Expo. Let's see if Nick drops the bowler again. Yep, there's yep. the bowler. So similar to what we saw on the outset. The this is going to be a very key play for him here on defense-wise. Looking for Nick's Mega Minion. There it is. There's Nick's Mega Minion. Oh, no, that yeah. Expo's uh, now just liquidating goes. through yep. now. Yep. That is tough. Miner trying to get in there, get pushed back by the log. The Expo still just grinding away. Oh boy, oh that took way down too much under, damage. Down to right a solid a thousand. thousand. Look at Top Notch <laughs> stretching out, hands behind his head. He's looking a little relaxed right oh, he's there. He's feeling confident. Yeah. 
So oh he's my alternating goodness. offensive, defensive expos. Yeah, he's got a lot of defense on his end. As an expos taking everything down with an inferno as well. Yeah. A lightning right, good lightning. Right there. But the expos gonna work on that furnace one more time. Let's see, we have a lock coming here. We got 20 yeah. seconds coming over here to overtime. Another good luck and another expo right as the furnace disappears. The bowler is there though. Bowler's gonna try to survive. Furnace is up. So this expo should not lock onto the tower because you've got the furnace in the way as well. Yep, five seconds left to overtime here. That Mega Minion might actually get through. Oh, the lightning takes oh, no. down the expo. The arrows oh, comes in for the clutch. Just the fireball. fireball. Nicking it down to 382. 382. Nick needs 800 over there though, so that's, it's got a ways to go. Here comes the Miner. Miner is not going to lock on. It goes after the Ice Golem instead. That's You've good. got locks from both players. 696, 382. Fireball. Once again, another fireball. That's it. That just means one more fireball. And this is going to be over. So you can see Top Notch is just cycling through cards, yep. getting back to his fireball. Uh, Ice Spirit, the minions go down. He's giving him a good game. Here All comes. he needs to do is cycle that fireball. Cycle through. Yep. Yep. Whew. Wasn't Top even notch. wasn't even focused on anything but just throwing trash cards down until he got the fireball yeah. back up. I well, mean, how can that, that can, you know, be bad though if you keep throwing out cards or do you think that's like the only solution well to that? it could come back and bite you but for this matter it was just all about cycling it right. through because he had so much defensive all he had to do was just drop his defenses right in that previous game we saw something similar where the player was trying to cycle back around to the lightning spell but you had a lot of pressure there was a big push coming nick didn't have a big push coming on the tower so there was really no worry to just dropping two three elixir cards back in the back until you get around to the fireball in time. But Top Notch was just dropping fireballs, even when he didn't really have a confirmed tower. Well, yeah, but, you know, like, like we said, just this, he cycled through defensively. Right. And because of that, it didn't really affect him badly. But if it wasn't on the defensive side of, like, buildings like Inferno and Expos, because he mm -hmm. did put it down for defense, which is very unorthodox, but it did yeah. benefit him this game. I like that. And that was something I was excited, hoping to see today, was not only a use of a siege deck, a use of a siege card in such a different way, really alternating offense, defense, offense, defense. Yeah, the defensive crossbow definitely seemed to benefit yep, him. Yep. And I think we actually have game two underway, guys. Let's head right into it. All right. So Top Notch has switched his deck. So Nick using the same thing as before. So we'll see what Top Notch has again. Mega Minion, yep. I hate to say it, but that card's going to get nerfed. Yeah, I'm right now. telling you, next update. Yeah. Next time you see balancing, I would be shocked if the Mega Minion wasn't nerfed. It's just, you're just seeing that card constantly. It's in about 95% of the yeah. combinations that we've come yeah. across. Wouldn't be surprised to see it. Yeah, the Miner with oh, the graveyard, graveyard coming in. I love it. Miner graveyard. Good timing. Nick gets them both in there together. Only thing he has is the log, but he did do some damage yeah. there. Yeah, that's about 600 or so off that tower. That's going to definitely benefit him. But we have a gold coming here pretty strong. Uh -oh. I don't know what he's going to support with it. Well, the Inferno Tower is out of cycle, and you can see that That's interesting. knew that. The Inferno Tower was out of cycle, and the Golden oh, Gods of the Tower. Oh my god, that goal right now is, is just destroying it. It's so weird to see a Knight coming to play. We have not seen that. No, Knight is one of my favorite cards. Oh my god, that Mega Minion right now is just decimating the tower. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens. That's unfortunate. Oh god. The Mega Minion and the Golem just together. Nick didn't have that Inferno ready, and that no, made the, all the difference right there. We have a minute 30 left, and Top Notch has already taken one of his towers down here. He's sitting in a very comfortable position, I'd say. Yep, yep. You can see the dragon dropped way in the back. Just prepared, yeah, just in case now. maybe the graveyard went down, the dragon would have turned after it. Nick and I going to have to push a very successful graveyard push here. Yeah, and that golem is back there, again, working defensively as well. Let's see what he's going to do here. I mean, that golem right here, he has the Inferno, but I feel like it's been dropped too early. Yeah, the Inferno down about half health already, and uh, it's not going to take much damage to get it out of yep. the way. We got ourselves double Ice Golem. 60 seconds, and we're going on the opposite end here. Yeah, Nick trying again, Graveyard. Once again, that log is maybe the absolute definite answer to stop that through. Yeah, he's getting similar amount of damage. In fact, almost exactly the same amount of damage off that tower. Maybe one more hit, but in the meantime, <laughs> another oh Top Notch pushing yet and again, another mega goal minion. with a Mega Minion. Nick might lose another tower here if he's not careful. That golem's gonna get there full size. Thousand hit points left. Dragon archers. 30 seconds oh left. It looks goodness. like Nick and Light's going to get three yeah. around here if unattended right now. That's tough. Yeah. Oh god. That is going to be the first three with round the, of the day. Was that lightning at the end? 
<laughs> yeah, that was just <laughs> adding some insult to injury. Yeah, that was. That oh was boy. definitely a little bit of. Uh, I think that was the yeah, most polarized though. game I've seen. Do you yeah. think that does that? Do you think that Top Notch is a top player? Is he going to be out, Yao Yao? Well, I think that I think that Top Notch in that first golem push took a huge advantage there, knowing the Inferno Tower wasn't there. Uh, you know, again, that's these really skilled players are going to know that cycle. They're going to know what their opponent has. He got the golem in. I mean, maybe the golem was deployed earlier and he didn't know that. Maybe I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, but either way, it worked out. The Inferno Tower wasn't ready, and yeah. that was the tower. I feel like the Inferno Tower might have been dropped a little bit too early, yeah. but besides the point, as we did see, the graveyard kind of was shifted off on the opposite end, which mm -hmm. uh, did the exact same damage down the opposite, so. Well, we have a lot of different decks and a lot of different play styles. Mm -hmm. Do you think Nyx was like a, a fast type of play style? Well, I feel like it was it was a good combination, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, it played correctly, uh, went down, it would do great. It just was finding that right opportunity time, but, you know, he wasn't able to find it just because it's such a hard push against him. Yeah, I mean, the Graveyard is a great card. I feel like it's seen a lot of success in the game, but probably more so because it's a newer card. A lot of players haven't, maybe the average player hasn't learned how to counter it. These guys, they absolutely know how to counter a Graveyard, and that's They're on top saw. of their game when it comes yeah. down to this card. Yeah. Well, seven sets are done, guys. We are now on to the final and eighth set of the round of 16. Only one YouTuber has made it through, Chief Pat, and we're going to see if Orange Juice can make his way through versus Mango. But first, let's head over to Sean.